Concerns that happened over the last six to 12 months, um, and the YDA National Committee made a decision that the previous elections um, were invalid. Uh, it's, a, it's a very specific process. There's a, there's a judicial council referral, there's hearings where you hear from both sides, and then there's a vote by the National Committee, which has representatives from all uh, 50 states, essentially, um, that then makes a decision on that uh, referral, on, that, on the recommendation from the judicial council. So that is the process that led us to this place. Um, you know, I am, uh, I am not from, from Washington, D.C. I live in West Virginia. I'm here this morning to just try to get us moving, you know, in, in the right direction. I do not have any interest in who wins today. I can assure you of that. But what we do need is, you know, a fair and open process. Um, the Judicial Council set up certain rules with deadlines. We had to have a 30-day notice. Then there had to be a 15-day reminder. The candidate list then had to be uh, put out by five days. All of those targets were met. Um, as accordance to the Judicial Council ruling and the National Committee decision. Um, I also realize that people are not universally happy with the previous decision. I understand that. Um, people are not universally happy with, um, with the process today. I understand that as well. Um, I am bound by the National Committee's decision, which took place in Chicago in early March. Everything that was laid out at that time, um, we have followed. That is my, that's my <coughs> obligation and responsibility. Um, at the same time, uh, we have tried to remain in close communication with the D.C. Democratic Party because all of our young de Democrat chapters across the country, each one of them, are basically dual recognized, uh, chartered with YDA, and, and normally uh, and also recognized by their, by their state party. If they do not have state party recognition, they can't get recognition from YDA. So it didn't make sense to sort of, for us to proceed through this process without remaining in touch with the D.C. Uh, state party. So um, I, I, I want to introduce you to just a couple of quick folks uh, Nicole Williams from Maryland is the chair of the Judicial Council. Uh, she has worked a lot of hours on this. It is uh, a bit of a thankless job, to be, to be quite honest, um, because uh, at the end of the day, people are not going to be happy with the outcome. I understand that. But she has, I think, tried to operate fairly as possible. I also want to introduce uh, Anita Bonds, who is the chair of, of the D.C. Democratic Party, who has been, I think, extremely supportive of young people and has worked for a long time to encourage young people to participate in Washington, D.C. Um, and I actually want to give her just a couple minutes to, to, to speak um, just about the importance of, of having a strong um, D.C. Young Democrats chapter here in, in the nation's capital and, and moving forward. So, Anita, if I could just turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you to everyone for coming out. Um, I don't have a lot of comment because... Frankly, the state party of the District of Columbia really has no jurisdiction over the Young Dems. However, we do provide for four seats on the Central Committee uh, from this organization. That is your chairperson, your vice chairperson, or president, vice president, and your national committee man and committee woman. So uh, we really do care what happens in your elections and in the formation of your organization. Today we see this as a restart for your chapter here in the District of Columbia. And so I hope that you will work with those individuals, whomever they may be, who are elected to put together a solid foundation. Um, I understand that there's this chartering process that you must go through um, as a young Democrats chapter in the District of Columbia. Make sure you pay attention to it. Make sure you pay attention to the deadlines. And most importantly, get involved. This is a very critical year for all of us, and particularly for the population in the District of Columbia that you fulfilled. Um, just so you know, 34% um, 
of the registered voters in the District of Columbia fall in your age category. Um, meaning that, you know, you could take over. And so I remember when I was a young Democrat and I thought that I needed to take over the world too. So I'm hoping that feel that way. Um, but welcome, um, I hope things run smoothly. From what I can see as a monitor this morning, things were moving smoothly. But you know, I of the beholder, I don't know. We'll see how things work out, but I hope that through all of the controversy that I read about and that I've heard about, or you know, the little whispers and what have you, that we can come together as a body in the District of Columbia. We need each other, and we certainly need each other as we move forward to re-elect President Barack Obama. in the last several days about um, specific questions around uh, membership, et cetera. I, I want to I address a couple of these points. Uh, YDA National has no authority or ability to determine how a state chapter identifies or, or defines its own membership. Um, the DC Young Democrats for many, many years, um, and I would be the first to admit that I think the bylaws are uh, of this organization currently um, are not the best, it's not, they're not particularly well written in this particular area. And it has been a lot of confusion many, many times um, in past elections as well. However, this organization for many years has basically interpreted that you need to be a voting resident, uh, you have to be a registered voter in the District of Columbia in order to, to vote in the elections of the, the DC Young Democrats. Um, there was some confusion around this point. Um, Nicole did a, a lot of due diligence to not only check with the YDA Rules Committee, but also with the General Counsel of the DC Democratic Party this week, and, and also following basically what has been always the, uh, the, the, the rules or the, the uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, basically the way the organization has always carried out this, this uh, interpretation is that you have to be a registered voter in DC. YDA has no authority to basically rewrite that. Um, it's, it's not in our interest to do that. That's the local chapter's rules. So, um, you know, I know there's been some controversy around that point. Um, I think it's it's a, it's a discussion that's worth having moving forward. Um, I think there are perhaps some missed opportunities because of the 18-year-old uh, uh, um, minimum age. You, you know, we have a lot of high school activity in other state chapters. It's something I would encourage, you know, maybe perhaps lowering that so that younger people can vote. There are obviously a lot of colleges in this town having better uh, coordination with the college and universities. I think there are some opportunities and some discussions that need to be had around membership, but that's not YDA National's responsibility right now to come in here and change the way those election boys are conducted. So I wanted to be very clear on that point. Secondly, I know there have been some concerns about signatures on the ballot and other things like that today. Um, there, there are a couple of reasons why that was done. One is, my understanding at check-in, there was some discrepancy between the voter file and the actual Board of Elections website. Um, and so to you know, preserve the integrity and the consistency of, of that, people were asked to, to basically sign in. Secondly, YDA National, along with the DNC, has always had a rule that, that elections are open processes and not anonymous. So when you're sitting in a convention setting, and you're voting for someone, you know, you say I and you raise your hand or, or whatever. Um, we, we basically do not have anonymous secret ballot elections within YDA, neither does the DNC. And so, you know, we were operating this election in accordance with what we knew to be, you know, national rules. I realize not everyone's happy with that either. I can assure you that we're not going to be releasing the ballots publicly so that everyone knows who, you know, who voted for who. That was not the intention of that. So uh, please understand that we're operating in good faith we're trying to, to have this process run as smoothly as possible. I'm sure there's a million other issues that we could address, um, but, I, but you know we've been here quite long enough already. Um, with that being said, um, there are some candidates that do want to address uh, the group today. So we're going to go um, through the list. 
um, alphabetically um, down through, uh, through the positions that, uh, particularly if they're contested, um, if you're not contested, please introduce yourself, but you know, if you don't want to use your three minutes, that's actually very helpful. Um, <laughs> so with that being said, um, we're first going to hear from Toby Carranza, who is running the president of DCYD. And Toby, uh, you've got your three minutes in the cold to keep being time. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out today. I really, really appreciate everybody coming out. My name is Toby Quaranta, and I'm running for DCYD president because I feel that I am the only leader who can truly give this organization the fresh start that it needs. I live in Ward 2 with my husband. I've lived there for six years. I grew up in Fairfax and Arlington, and I've been organizing for progressive causes in this region for over a decade. I feel like I'm the only one with the experience to be able to lead this organization in a way that we will be able to make a major impact on the 2012 elections and a major impact in this city. As a lobbyist on Capitol Hill, I've pressured politicians to make the right choices. Whether it's opposing new alcohol taxes in this city, whether it's keeping metro rates affordable, or whether it's tenants' workers' rights, we need an independent voice to advocate in front of the DC City Council for Young People. I'm the only person in this organization who has the ability to claim independence. I am beholden to no politician and no party leadership. I am firm in making sure that you are my only priority and you are my only focus. I know how to organize young people and I know how to raise money. 2009 was a horrible year for Democrats. But when I was the executive director of the Virginia Young Democrats, we raised $100,000 dollars. I hired 14 field organizers and we made 100,000 voter contacts. That's important. That's powerful. As the field director for Communications Workers Union, I ran a 26 staff nationwide program with a $2 million budget to lobby Congress. I'm the only person with the experience to help this organization get back on track. The most important thing in November is making sure that Barack Obama gets reelected and that we have a Democratic leadership in Congress and I am the person who can do that. This city, guys, this city is awesome. This city is progressive and diverse and young and we need a YD chapter to match that. I can do that. Philip Pinelli, he's uh, from Ward 8, he told me the other day that this meeting in 1979 had 1,400 people at it. We deserve better. I can help get us there. We need a leader who's going to have a membership plan and a fundraising program and is going to be able to take this organization to new heights. We need a leader who's going to be able to put power behind doing good work. We need somebody who's going to focus on doing good things and not focus on the small politics. There is no more important time than right now to have a great year for DCYD. Barack Obama is too important, 2012 is too critical. I'm the only leader in this organization who can advocate independently. I have the organizing ability, the fundraising experience, and the advocacy chops to be able to take this organization to the next level, but I need your help. I need your vote. I need your vote today. Please vote for Toby for your president. Thank you so much. I and I'm a native Washingtonian, a proud resident of the District of Columbia all my life, a resident of the great Ward 4, um, and I'm very pleased to be here today to ask you to elect me as your next president for DCYDA. Um, I'm also delighted to be a pledged Democratic delegate for the 2012 convention to go back and renominate President Barack Obama. Let's hear it for the <laughs> I know that I have the ability to organize young professionals in the District of Columbia between the ages of 18 and 35. I am committed to this city. I'm committed to making sure that everybody knows about the Young Democrats chapter here in the District of Columbia, working with all of the ward Democratic organizations, wards one through eight, working with all of the citywide um, Democratic organizations. So I really want to, I would love to have your vote today. 
Um, I've put together a fantastic slate. People that I know that are committed to the District of Columbia are very professional. They're committed to making uh, the Democratic Party in the District of Columbia one. So please vote Brandon Todd and vote for the slate. Thank you.
heard in our city. There's been too many times where we find out about things at the 11th hour and then we have no impact. We have no way of doing anything to make a difference. What I plan to do is to assist in every way that I can to make sure that not only our voices are heard, but to help with our neighboring um, Maryland and Virginia and even on the national level. We have to work together. It doesn't, it starts in D.C., but it does not end here. We just need to make sure that we are effective, that we are professional, and that we help to get our president, who's done an excellent job, reelected. So anything that I can do, that is what I am here to represent. This city, those that are 18 to 35, and then when I pass that mark, I'll help with the other <laughs>
we have a lot of Latino people that are not registered to vote, and that is the reason that I want to start by you know by, by getting my feet wet, and is you know to make sure that create a momentum in the Latino community and how we are going to be come together once we elect and make sure that we get whatever we need to do to make your, our voices heard. So when I'm on consensus also. So you know, thank you and buenas buenos dias. <laughs> Selected um, so that it has to be uh, one each, um, so yeah. it's gender, not gender, gender balance. Gender balance. Um, in addition to, I think the national committee made a big one. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. With that being said, um, Richard and Nicole. Oh, so if you have not cast your ballot, uh, all the candidates have now spoken. So if anyone needs to still cast their ballot, please do so now. As I mentioned earlier, the Judicial Council followed uh, the process according to bylaws and, and the National Committee's order. So, um, with that being said, um, are the yeah. ballots numbered? Uh, the ballots are not signed. They're not numbered? Signed by numbers. They're not numbered. Signed by numbers, yes. But they are on the same ballot. So, what's going to happen now is that. Um, Richard. Richard and Nicole will be overseeing, um, or, or going to actually be doing the counting. Um, per the rules of the day, um, there can be a representative from you know, each of the candidates that's able to sort of observe, obviously, the process as well. So I'm going to have um, Nicole just uh, quickly explain the way this is going to take place. And then those obviously who are interested in the outcome, please stick around so that we can then uh, make the announcement and the conclusion. Nicole, I'm going to turn it to you for just a quick second. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to do the county up here. So it is out in the open. Everyone can watch. Each candidate is allowed to have it up. one observer. Ballots prior to folks coming in the room to speak. Are you still eligible to receive your ballot? No, ballot? you're not eligible to receive a ballot at this time. No. Some people held on to their ballots um, and did not cast their ballots because they wanted to hear the candidates speak. And we allow people to hear the candidates speak before they place their ballot in the box. Um, but with the rules of the day, that was part of the email that did go out at the top of the rules of the day. It did say from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, the second so, point board yes. for the DC Young Democrats Constitution, the bylaws, were the rules of the day approved prior to this election beginning? The rules of the day were reviewed, they were... Were they, they approved? Were approved, they were, what do you mean approved? According to the bylaws, all rules of the day for an election are tentative until the beginning of the election and must therefore be approved prior to the all Okay, let me make sure we're very clear about today. Today is an election, today is not a meeting, today is not a convention of DCYD. The sole purpose of today's activity is solely for the purpose to elect officers of the organization. Because this is not a convention, there is not a rules committee in which to review the rules, nor is there a assembly of the organization in which the rules are to be presented to. That's incorrect. This is an assembly of the organization. Therefore, the this rules meeting are to be this, this, this please, event please, please, is please, please let me finish. As, as the current executive vice president, and someone who has done this several times on the national and local level, the rules state even in special election, it does not say in a convention. It says rules of convention. Once again, it does not state that in a convention, it states rules of the day are tentative until they are approved. Not and it does not say convention. This is a meeting, ergo, this because there have been no motions. Um, we haven't opened the meeting. We haven't closed the meeting. Okay, then how? It's, it's, it's just an right. election. Okay, the, 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 here to vote. So, so who created the rules? The, the national committee approved the rules. The judicial council set out. Okay, but according to your statement earlier, and according to Nicole's statement, the national committee does not have authority to create rules for a DCA Democrats election because the they didn't have an oversight of it. All right, wait, 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 I understand your points. Obviously, well, your points made. Okay, the process is laid out. We have followed it. If you, you have, a re, there's a recourse, if you don't agree with this process, you have every ability to file with YDA and with the DC State Party that you didn't, you know, you didn't agree with that. That's, that is absolutely available to you. But for right now, during this hour, we're following the rules that we set out. We're following them very, very closely, okay? So I, we just have to leave it at that. Judicial Council said, set out specifically regarding the elections for today. <coughs> it's very, it very prescriptive. So, um, 
that is just but, all right. I, that's, we just have to. Yeah. Do we can now. Yes. YDA cannot write the constitution for DCYD, and that, I believe that's what Rod stated earlier. We cannot do that. But there was an order that was issued by the National Committee of the Young Democrats of America that the elections need to be held, and that that election would be oversaw by the regional director, who unfortunately could not be here, and in turn proxy his authority over to Rod Snyder, our national president. Okay, the regional director is the one who has set up this entire election. Okay, as well as the rules of the day pursuant to the judicial council order. Okay, we are not rewriting DCYD constitution. We are not rewriting DCYD bylaws. Okay, um, now. Mayor, Mayor County, um, once again, I think my initial question was, Brandon, if you had an appointed person, who is that person? Darrell. Darrell? Okay, if you can. All right, and then there was, um, who's the other contestant? Naomi? Darrell. Did you want to, the same person? And the other person is not here, so um, I cannot ask if he would like to have someone <laughs> oversee or not. Okay. Um, after that point, we're once the results have been tallied and announced, um, and we will also post it on the Facebook page. Um, unfortunately, we do not have a website in which to post the results on to. Um, and then we're done here for today. Any questions? It's not a question. Um, well, I'm the only entertaining questions at this time. It's a statement. Can I have a moment? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, for those of you who do not know, I'm Don Isaac Jr. and uh, I've been serving as the interim president for this organization for the past year. Um, I just wanted to take this time to thank the existing uh, or the current executive body members who are here who have been working very hard to restore this organization. We're putting in a lot of time and effort. Um, and, and within this time, I think there are people who have been working diligently despite what you may, all, may hear all the time. Um, I also, uh, secondly, I would like to uh, acknowledge Rod and Nicole because they have been working hard to pull this whole thing together. And we are grateful because the, the, the goal of all of this is for DCYD to get back in track so that we can make an, uh, an impact in the swing state of Virginia in which President Obama really needs our help. Um, I wanted to speak with each of you all in that vein. I'm currently the uh, state director, field director for the Democratic State Party. And as Anita said earlier, it's important that we all work together, um, despite whatever happens today, to, uh, to get President Obama elected in Virginia. So when you hear from me, you know, please, 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 I implore that you all respond. You are just as responsive about our efforts in Virginia as you were today. And I look forward to working with each of you and to continue on our efforts to get President Obama elected. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say another word about, about, about Donald. Um, he's been excellent to work with. This has not been an easy process. Um, and for those who were on the previous board, obviously, quite a controversial process. Um, there has been you know, a shadow over this organization, as you all know. Um, but Donald's integrity is incredible. He is um, an incredible young Democratic leader. He's going to do great things in the city. He's on staff with the state party. I have absolutely nothing but, but respect for Don Isaac. And, uh, and you know, I just want to make sure that I say here this morning that any decisions or any action that YDA took in relation to um, the previous election, whether or not they were valid, is not a reflection of the character of Don Isaac, who was still running that board. He's an incredible man and has done good things for this organization and is going to be around for a long time. So I really do appreciate your leadership. Um, and I just want to say ditto to that. I, our intent was not anything personal to anyone who served on the executive board of DCYD before this entire process started. Um, you know, just to reiterate, I mean, someone mentioned that they didn't receive notice. I know the Judicial Council, I personally emailed Don Isaac the order once it was ruled. Um, and so in that vein, I felt as though it was disseminated to DCYD because I personally did send him that email. 
Um, the other thing we have, I um, also wanted to um, just point out, uh, Anthony Youngblood is here, who is the president of the Pennsylvania Young Democrats and from the city of Philadelphia. And he has to really do appreciate the energy in this room. Uh, I have no particular horse in the race, but I'm just here to uh, um, bid you greetings from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and also announce that the YDA national meeting will be in Philadelphia this summer. So we would like to uh, welcome you. Uh, <laughs> so I would like to work closely with your leaders in helping that make um, this that have been a great success and hope that you all take this energy and come up the turnpike or up the I-95 I I and come join us in uh, Philadelphia. And I just also want to thank Rod and Nicole because they're doing an excellent job with this. And like I said, you know, best of luck to your organization going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so it's going to be uh, June 29th through July 1st. Yeah. That weekend is weekend of right before the 4th of July. Where else would you want to spend the weekend before the 4th of July? But in birthplace of our country, <laughs> just flowers from the Liberty Bell, and uh, we're, expect, we're expecting to have a pretty awesome lineup um, of speakers and trainers that weekend, and the Pennsylvania Young Dubs are going to be great hosts. We're going to be at a hotel right downtown in the middle of everything. It's going to be a lot of fun. So June 29th through July 1st, please, please, please come out. Uh, the VP for Administration and Finance, Naomi Shelton, uh, had 94 votes, Connell Wise had 12, and for President, uh, Toby had 80 votes, and Brandon had 54. So that's <laughs> single word that I said. This is such an important year. Barack Obama is not going to have an easy re-election. We are going to every single person who I called and asked for a vote, you better bet your bottom dollar that I'm going to be calling you and asking you to knock on doors for the president, to knock on doors for young people running in this city. You know, I feel bad. Drew, thank you so much for all your help, but I lied to you a little bit last night. I saw, told you that today everything would be over. <laughs> this is just the beginning of a lot of hard work. We are going to engage people in every single ward of this city. We are going to engage people on every single campus of this city. And we are going to re-elect Barack Obama. And we're going to make Nancy Pelosi yes! speaker again. This is going to be a great year. Thank you so much.